Today I'm going to go show you how to do this kick and bass. Which is basically the old school classic uh, high tech bass. Um, also the been used in a lot of dark side tracks. Um, so in order to do this, uh, we're going to use some old plugins that were very popular back in the day and probably still are to some extent. Um, I know I use them so, uh, sometimes. Um, for the kick, we're going to use kick two. And actually, I'm not going to recreate this kick. <laughs> it took me a lot of time to get it just right, and I don't want to do that process all over again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, give you guys the preset um, instead for kick two. I might upload a sample as well for you that don't have um, kick two. But it sounds basically like this in, in solo. So what's special about it is that rather than taking up one eighth of space, it only takes up roughly one sixteenth. That way we make sure to have more room for our base um, and we don't have to worry too much about phase aligning it um, later on in the process. Um, so uh, for the for the base, um, we're going to go over that right now, actually. Um, so for the baseline, what we need is um, we need a VV1, which is one of the sin that I was talking about earlier. That is one of the old school way of doing it. When you load it up for the first time, uh, this one is available in 64-bit, by the way. I'll leave a link in the description on where you can get it. So don't forget to check that out. But this is how it sounds when you first load it up. We're playing F sharp. Um, I'm going to activate the velocity. Uh, this is a little trick I got taught by Mute Production. Uh, this will um, make sure that I'm staying within a certain range of the velocity and it makes it easier to adjust it later on because it sets the minimum value and the maximum value. Um, then I'm going to use a note length. This will make sure that the baseline isn't bleeding, uh, bleeding over. So if you watch this here, the release to zero so let's just shape the baseline now so if we move the plectrum over here we change the wave shape and by moving the fretboard i believe we're changing the sh we're phase shifting it or, or like changing the, the starting point of the phase or we're playing some kind of attack i'm not 100 percent sure exactly on what it does I'm going to pull it all the way back. The damper, I'll set it to, it's basically like mod amount, I believe. I'm going to put it at 93. I'm going to lower the volume a little bit. So we're hitting at about... Minus 13. Perfect. That's fine. So that's now I'm happy with the actual how it sounds from the plugin. Next step is to grab a quarter fuzz. In order to use this, um, you have to have JBridge. What the fuck happened now? Okay, some error, I guess. Load it again. There we go. So this is the old Quadrifuzz plugin. Um, I believe it's included in the older Cubases, but now it's been replaced by Quadrifuzz 2.0. Um, but I happened to get my hands on with some kind user in the Cytrans producer forum, I believe, or some of the forums on Facebook that sent me the uh, uh, Quadrifuzz Blue. Um, 
because I saw Backdome using it in one of his videos. So I was like, hey, how did he get the blue one? Because uh, I only had the other one, which is the red one. That looks similar, but not the same. In order to get the preset, you have to like go in, create, type default, and then it will reset itself. So it looks like the blue one. I believe they sound the same, but I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to use a blue one for this video. Um, so without the plugin, it sounds like this. With the plugin. Without. With. So, yeah. So what we're going to do is... See if we can adjust some crossovers. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to shift it so there are not that high peaks in volume in order to save headroom that's a goal of finding the correct crossover point um, so i think i'm quite happy with that i think we lowered it with a couple of dbs um, yet the overall volume is, is still high so let's just lower it for a little bit so without can do it like this. Or maybe not. Um, now we're equal loudness when we turn these off. no changing gain right anyway um <clears throat> so that's basically it um for the multiband distortion now next step is to use an eq i'm going to use an eq called 1973 um, i think it's based off a neeb console something like that uh, from stillwell i will uh, leave a link in the description where you can get it um, you can use a free demo of it but i'm gonna purchase it um, sometime in the near future anyway uh i you can hear that there's some around the 700 hertz area. I'm going to remove. If you right click, you can see the amount. Try go by ear. I'm going to do a low shelf over here. Because we don't need that much bass. Perfect. Then we can raise the volume again with we're equal loudness again then I'm going to apply a little high cut over here found a frequency around 120 hertz that I want to remove just a little bit and we're basically done this is the kick and bass so let's see the first version that I did pretty damn close the volume even more
Perfect. I think we're done. Thank you for tuning in.